it is always good to be here. And I just want to say that I'm blessed to see you. I'm blessed to have you. And my prayer is that God will really bless us before we leave here. Amen. It is always a joy to come to his presence. Bible says that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So anytime you are coming here, you come with love, joy, and with a great expectation to receive from the King of Kings. Amen. This morning, you know what we've been doing? We, were, we are just uh, looking at the goals of our faith and trying as much as we can to really um, focus on what God is doing with us and for us in this season. Hallelujah. So this morning, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we spoke about faith and uh, really being united in our faith and growing our faith. And this morning, we're going to grow in the knowledge of the Son of God. Hallelujah. Because if we are going to grow as Christians, then we have to grow in the knowledge of the Son of God. Because that's, you know, Jesus is at the center of it all. Without him, who are you and who am I? So he is at the center of everything that we are doing. If you are a Christian, you are, a Christ, you are called a Christian because of the name Christ. Hallelujah. Because without Christ, there is no Christian. And every Christian is a believer who has lived a life, not just a believer, but a believer or a disciple who has lived a life that really ref reflects Christ. So if you live a life that reflects Christ, what is happening is that you are now living like Christ. And then you bear the name Christian. Hallelujah. And that's what happened uh, the first time they were called Christians. Amen. This morning, as I said, we're going to look at uh, growing in the knowledge of the Son of God. Hallelujah. And this is one area that I believe is very challenging for us as Christians. Why is it so? Because the first thing is that we don't want to study the word. And if you don't study the word, you will not know him. Hallelujah. And also, we also need to be careful that in studying the word, we just depend on that study that we have done. And most of us study with our, with our minds, our carnal minds. And so there are people who know the Bible more than me and you. Yet they don't know Christ. Hallelujah. So we ought to be very careful. Because if you are not careful, you will be really just reading the Bible, but not knowing who you are reading about. And if you do that, most of, that, of the time, you really now begin to challenge yourself. I mean, I wouldn't even say challenge yourself. You will be really living uh, in a place where you don't understand what you are reading. And that's dangerous. Because if you don't understand what you are reading, you put meanings into it, which are not right. And you begin to understand the word differently from what God really wants you to know. And that's so dangerous in the sense that you begin to live a life pretending to be what God wants you to be. And that's what happened to the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees. They, look, if you think you read the Bible or you study the Bible, you are nowhere close to them. Yet, they didn't understand. Hallelujah. And Paul was one of them. Paul was one of them. And that's why he talks about as for zeal, it was, his zeal was for persecuting the church. Because he thought he knew, but he didn't know. Amen. And many of us think we know, but we don't know. I always say that we can only know him by revelation. 
If you want to know him, you have to know him by revelation. Why am I saying that? Now, if you look closely at Jesus, he walked with his disciples. And then one day he asked them, Who do people say I, I am? I'm you. You know, I, I walk with you. You know, the, the Jesus walking with them was he knew the people, but his disciples were closer to the people than Jesus. Because after Jesus had preached and everything, the Bible says that he goes to hang out with God because he just leaves and goes into prayer. But the disciples will be there hanging out with the people, making sure, like if we close from church, uh, there are people hanging around just making sure things are put in the right. So those people really relate to the people more than Jesus. Amen. So, these guys now began to, oh, some say you are this, some say you are that, some say you are that. Then Jesus looked at them and said, if you say, I am. Yeah, people are saying what they are saying. That's fine. If they are people. But you, you the 12, you these people who are very close to me, who do you say? Hallelujah. And this one is looking like this one is looking at it. Then Peter began to speak in Luke chapter. Let's go to Luke, Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. Quickly, Luke chapter 10, verse 22. Luke chapter 10, verse 22. No, I think it's Matthew, sorry. Matthew 16, 15 to 17. Matthew 15. Amen. Okay, let's read. But what about you? They are all saying all kinds of things in the preceding verses. And then Jesus now comes. Okay, yeah. People said I'm this. People said I'm that. People said I'm that. That's fine. They are the people. While you, I've been working with you. I've been living with you. I've been eating with you. I've been sleeping with you. I've been really doing everything with you. Who do you think or who do you say I am? I think, in a way, it, it caught them by surprise because they, uh, maybe they were not expecting that Jesus was going to ask them. So the place was quiet. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. You are the provider of bread. Because you give us bread to eat. You are the deliverer of the people because we see you healing the people and delivering them. They were thinking. Then Peter, Bible says that Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. The moment he said that, let's go to the next verse and see what Jesus said. Jesus replied, Blessed are you. Blessed are you. Having knowledge of who he is, Alone, you are blessed. You are blessed. They were all there. He didn't say, blessed are you, my disciples. He didn't say, blessed are you, God. Oh, you have followed you. He said, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Because he now addressed him. Because he got the revelation. And he said, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. If God in heaven does not reveal to you, you will not know him. You can read the Bible back to back hundred times and you will miss it. It is not about how well you can read. The fact that you read doesn't mean anything. 
Hallelujah. Because if that was so, if that really means something, and I'm not saying you don't have to read because if you don't read, you don't you know. Amen. But just reading doesn't solve the problem. If that solved the problem, the Ethiopian Enoch would have been uh, uh, what? Maybe a Bible teacher. Because you, when you sit in your car, you don't even read. But when he was sitting in his chariot, what was he doing? He was reading. He had traveled this long distance just to go and hear the word of the Lord. Then when he was going back to his country, he was reading. Reading. Because he wants to know. But, we, you know, he was not a small man. He was a very big man. But yet, he didn't know. He was reading. Yet, he didn't understand. So God watched from heaven. And through the power of the Spirit who is working in us, chose Philip. There is a man reading the Bible, but he doesn't understand anything. He's been reading and reading and reading and reading, but he doesn't understand anything. Go to him. Look, your desire to know him through his word will cause God to do a miracle that is so supernatural. Look, how many people have you heard that they can move from here to Accra Central without aeroplane, without car, without what? Without bicycle, without any means of transport. They are translated from here to there. And God did that because somebody wanted to know him. And that person was studying, but he didn't understand. So he said, look, I'm going to do something. Look, I am picking this one myself. And then I'm going to plant him there. Hallelujah. So that this Ethiopian Enoch will not miss it. Hallelujah. When you begin to seek him, you will find him. When you begin to seek him, you will find him. But unfortunately, how many of us sitting here are even starting? Tell me, how many of us sitting here this morning? And I will tell you something that will shock you this morning. You know, many of us, what we desire, we think that having money is the end of it. No. No. If you are not careful, you, and, and, and listen, listen to me carefully, please. I want you to listen to me carefully. Don't hear what I didn't say. Hallelujah. Don't hear what I didn't say because we are fond of hearing what pastors have not said. Amen. <laughs> we read meanings into it and we begin to really uh, um, say it the way we feel we understood it. Don't say that. Don't say what I didn't say. Say what I said. Listen to me carefully. We pastors. A lot of us are leading you as astray. I'm telling you. A lot of us, and I'm including myself, a lot of us are leading you astray. Your deliverance, your blessing, hallelujah, is not in money. It is not in money. It is in knowing him. It is knowing him. We have made church look like. No, this breaks my heart. Because if you are in church and you haven't bought the latest car, you are not successful. You are not blessed. You haven't had a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Breakthroughs are not determined by how much money you have. Because you can be very rich, yet so poor. Hallelujah. You can be very rich with money, resources, 
but yet he is so poor and miserable. Nobody knows how you turn around in bed. They see you, they judge you, or they lift you, or they hail you by your car, not by you, or by your house, or by your shoe, or your dress. But they don't know inside of you what you are going through. Hallelujah. Yeah, you don't look at me like that. Hallelujah. Yeah, but why are you saying that? We have to look at you like that because. It looks like you came from space last night. I didn't come from I've been living with you all along. Hallelujah. But why are you saying that? I'm saying that because I gave you an example like two minutes ago. The Ethiopian Enoch had everything. But he was struggling in his chariot. And nobody knew. Everybody thought that he was a rich man. Everybody thought that he knew. He was always studying the Bible. So he knew something. It was only God in heaven knew how the guy was struggling how the guy was suffering and he had to send him help hallelujah so the fact that you are you, you in fact at that time a chariot was like the latest not V8 V8 is, is what maybe the latest Mercedes or the latest Ferrari or the latest whatever you want to call it Hallelujah. It could be the latest Rolls Royce. It could be whatever. You see, what I want you to understand was that guy was very rich. He was very rich. But his wealth does not catch the attention of God. It is his desire to know the word that caught his attention. So he did not tell Philip that go to that man and then really... No, 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 no. He said... The man is struggling to know me. He has been really spending time trying to know me. But he doesn't understand what he's reading. And he needs help. Many of us need help. Oh. I said many of us would do what? Yeah, you read the Bible and the way you are interpreting it. Because somebody told you that this one means this. You are, it doesn't mean that. Are we here still? Okay, all right. If you are here, then I can continue. I thought you just left me alone. Hallelujah. The truth is that it is extremely important. You cannot, you cannot know him by any other way but to study. And as you study, he begins to reveal to you. Listen. This guy had walked. Listen to me carefully. Peter had walked with Jesus. Yet, he knew something about him. But he didn't know it all. And he didn't have the, really, the truth about him until it was revealed to him. I don't have time to go into Cleopas and his friend. I don't have that time. But if I, I know I've told you several times, so you know. They worked with Jesus. They left their businesses, left everything they were doing, and then traveled to Jerusalem. Their hometown is Amos. They went to Jerusalem, stayed with Jesus, followed Jesus, did everything with Jesus. And Jesus died. Because of lack of knowledge, my people, they didn't have knowledge. They knew him to an extent. And therefore, they followed him, having the wrong mindset. Because most of the people that followed Jesus and were of a certain caliber, they thought that Jesus was going to be made president. And then they would get ministerial positions. And if they don't get what they want, they... Okay, no, let me know. I mean, let's, let's move on. Hallelujah. It's like that today too. But the point I'm trying to make is that these guys, when Jesus had died, third day, the women went to empty. He's abandoned us. So what do we have to do? Go back to our hometown, to our business. 
So they decided to go. They didn't even wait till the next day. They decided to go. They left. And then Jesus looked at them. And he saw that these people is because of their lack of knowledge. So he joined them on the journey. And Jesus walked with them. Young man, what are you talking about? Then they said, oh yeah. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? You don't know what we're talking about. You don't know what has happened there. Jesus pretended he didn't know. Now they said all kinds of things. Yeah, he came here and then he died. And our people had gone to find him. And there was, the tomb is empty. And there was... Jesus looked at this, how foolish you are. Listen. And last time I told you that even when Jesus, whilst Jesus was speaking, he began to feel his presence. Now watch it. Feeling his presence doesn't change anybody. It doesn't. You can be in church. And because if, if the spirit, the presence of God really moves, you'll be touched. But that doesn't mean that you are changed. You can be touched but not changed. Hallelujah. Let me ask you, if you are walking on the street and somebody is washing his car and water spills, wouldn't the water fall on you? Because water is everywhere. Water will, yeah, definitely. But that doesn't mean that you're also washing car. Does it mean so? No. So they were with him. He spoke to them. His presence, you know, he carries, that is why when the woman touched me, he said something had gone out of me. Where you had gone out of me? Because he carries something. That is why, you know, some of the things eh, Isaiah told, he said, uh, uh, Hezekiah, he said, give me a sign. He said, your shadow. is no, no, no. You know, your shadow, that is why the early apostles, they will walk and their shadow will fall on people and they will get healing. So if Jesus is walking, and he's walking with you and talking with you. His shadow definitely falls on you. And you will feel his presence. But feeling his presence is not enough. It's an encounter with his presence that breaks a change. Hallelujah. And that encounter comes by revelation. So they walk with him. They just, and Jesus spoke from where he met them to their house. Nothing happened. These people... They were still thinking about their cows and their cattle and their sheep and goats that they left. But they invited Jesus home. And Jesus, the Bible says that. When they gave him food, he blessed it. And when he broke the bread, he gave to them. And they ate. Instantly, their eyes opened. And when their eyes opened, they saw it was Jesus. Immediately, Jesus vanished. Hallelujah. Now, they are now talking about the experience they had on the road. Yeah, didn't we feel anything? Like, your feelings doesn't matter. It is when he begins to reveal certain things to you and your eyes open, that's when you see who he really is. And when you see who he really is, Listen to me. These people left. They traveled to their hometown. I'm telling you, you can't sleep. The reason you are sleeping too much is you haven't encountered me. They didn't sleep. The Bible says that that same night, I don't know the time, but they went back to where they had left. Listen, when you have not encountered him, when you don't have the right knowledge about him, you will miss it. You will run away. You will leave church. You will do all kinds of things. But the moment you encounter him, you will not be able to run away from him. You will embrace him. So they run back. How? Because Jesus was revealed to them. If God reveals him to you, your life will never be the same again. My prayer is that you will allow him to reveal himself to you. That's my prayer. Because many of us are sitting in church. 
we haven't known him yet. Are we still around? Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, your partial knowledge of him as your savior is not enough. Yes, he's your savior. He's my savior. He saved us. But you see, if you know him as the Messiah, it's, it's a package. Hallelujah. If you know him as your savior, he saved you. But if you know him as your Messiah, Messiahship comes with a lot of things. It, it's, it's a package. It comes with deliverance. It comes with provision. It comes with, I mean, he, it comes with healing. He being your Messiah, the son of the living God makes him God. So in your mind, you begin to see him differently. You don't see him as, yeah, but he's my savior. But then when I am sick, yeah, he can heal me. No. No. If he's your Messiah, your Messiah will heal you. If he's your Messiah, your Messiah will provide for you. If he's your Messiah, he will begin to release to you. Hallelujah. What you don't have. But also, if he's your Messiah, you know that the Messiah has the sole right to judge you. You don't like that part. I know, I, I know you, nobody likes that part. Because everybody wants a free visa to heaven. Hallelujah. The visa to heaven indeed is free. But by faith. The visa to heaven is through him, right? the Messiah. Hello. But you can know him as your savior. And that is many of us are sitting in church. And I want us to pay attention so that we will begin to know who we are serving. Hallelujah. Because we come to church. We sit in church. We know him. Yeah. Who, who is Jesus to you? Hey, he's my savior. He saved me from all my sins. But he doesn't heal your sickness. He doesn't heal your diseases. He doesn't deliver you from the bondage you are in. Then what, what Christ is that? Hallelujah. The Jesus we say. The Jesus I know from the Bible. Doesn't save me and leave me. He saves me and promises that he will be with me until the end of the age. And if he is with me until the end of the age, when I am sick, he is there. When I walk through the fire, he is there. When I walk through the waters, he is there. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he will be there with me. Hallelujah. And he proved himself. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were put in the fire. When Daniel was put in the lion's den. Bible says, you see, he was there with Daniel. So the lion couldn't eat him up. He became his friend. Hallelujah. The fire couldn't consume these three young people. Why? The, you see, the people who threw them in, they were burned by that fire. Why? Because they didn't have the Messiah within them. If the fire could consume those who threw them, they don't have to reach the fire. Hallelujah. Yet they went into the fire and they danced at Baja, at Baja, or Azonto in the fire. Hallelujah. Bible says that they were going around. They were not just walking around, they were dancing. They were singing praises and dancing. And the, and the, and the book of the, hey, I thought I put three people in there. Yeah. But no, I see a fourth person. And the fourth person doesn't look like man. Hallelujah. When he comes, he will dance with you in the fire. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter. <clears throat> I don't know the kind of fire you are going through. And you speak as if God has abandoned you. It's because of your lack of knowledge. Because if you have knowledge, you know that he has promised that if you go through fire, he's going to be with you. You know, Christians worry ourselves for nothing. Don't look at what you see. Believe in the word of God. Because if you have knowledge, you'll believe in what God has given to you. Hallelujah. If I know Jesus, 
If I have, I have knowledge of who I am, I know who he is. I know what he does for me. And I know that even though things are hard, he says that that vision, it does what? It does what? Yes, but before it comes to pass, do it tires, do what? Why? Because the vision awaits and that's it. Appointed time, not your time. Not your chronos. Hallelujah. You look at time like it's five o'clock. He's looking at time in eternity. Hallelujah. So he lives in eternity. If he lives in eternity, your time doesn't control God. You know why? That's why he says that a, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like, because you know, he doesn't he doesn't even know. Amen. What you are talking about. Oh, but God has taken longer. He said, by whose watch? By whose time? I, I, I have taken long. You are using your time to tell me that I have taken long. Hallelujah. You, you using your own time. And you telling me, God, that I have taken long. Define long. Define it. Hallelujah. And let God define it. And you will see that God has not taken long. He says that it is for an appointed time. That is why the Bible says that if we ask according to his will, if you know his will, you know that this is not the appointed time. Don't ask for that car. It won't come. Hallelujah. You are struggling. Yes. It is true. You are, I can see that you are struggling. Hallelujah. And times are hard. And times are difficult. And yeah, but God is taking too long. I don't think he's taking too long. By the scripture I read. Hallelujah. If I look at 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 10. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. No, no. I don't think you are suffering for too long. Hallelujah. But because what does the Bible say? And the God of all grace. Who called you to his eternal glory. In Christ, after you have, after you have, so if you are suffering, it's in line. Hallelujah. Why he's preparing you? He's preparing you. So after you have suffered a little while, he himself, he will send an angel. He himself will do what? And then, and then, and then, hallelujah. With himself as the key. Hallelujah. You push. It's, yeah, it's like a, a, a rock. You push. You show. Nothing moves him. Hallelujah. So he said, after you have gone through that and he has made you who he wants you to be, it doesn't matter what wind will blow. It doesn't matter what problems will come. It doesn't matter what the enemy will do to you. You are going to be what? Strong, firm, and steadfast. Hallelujah. So don't use your time to confuse yourself. If you want to really see whether it has taken long, check God's time. Check his time. Hallelujah. Check his time. Maybe his will for you is that suffer a little while. I know you don't like this one. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Yeah, God is going to give you ten thousand dollars in the next one minute. We will say, "Yes, please, sir." This one you don't like. <laughs> Hallelujah! Suffer a little while. I didn't even say suffer long. I said suffer what? A little while, and you are angry at me. Oh, please, love me. I'm telling you the truth. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We serve a living God. We serve a God who cares so much about us. 
He's making life so easy for us, but we are making it complicated because we don't know him. We don't know his timing. We don't understand what he's doing. He makes all things in your time. In your time. I said in your time. In whose time? So it is ugly in your time. But in his time, he makes it beautiful. Hallelujah. You see, the one thing you need to know is to have knowledge about him. And when you do that, you will begin to see things differently. Hallelujah. Some people look at me and say, Ah, it would be beyond found. Be beyond for me. Because what does he say? Cast your burdens unto Jesus, for he cares for you. For me, it comes. We think we've been given. But if I give it to him here, wherever I want it to be, he will take it there. Hallelujah. If he can cause Philip to get Ira and, <laughs> and go to that man sitting in his chariot, then God, my God, will supply some of your needs. Ah, I, I, those people said some. Huh? Yeah, but I'm hearing it from here all. But what, what are you saying? Okay, uh, okay, 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 fine, fine. Uh, according to the riches of Jeff Bezos. Elon Musk. Of who? What does he own? His street. Elon Musk's house. No gold. Hallelujah. The richest, the richest man in the world doesn't have his, even his house is not paved with gold. But my God, his streets are paved with gold. So if he says that he will supply all my needs, According to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus, I will not lack anything. I said, I will not lack anything. If it has not come, I'm waiting for it. Hallelujah. Beloved in the Lord, I want you to understand the God you serve. You need to know him. You know, many of us, we are in church, but we don't know him. That's a sad case. We don't know him. Your worries are just because if you know him, you wouldn't have to worry the way you are worried. Suffering, he said, I have to suffer a little while. So that's fine with me. If he says so, he will give me the grace to go through it. Hallelujah. Look, everybody thought Job's situation was worse than anything any man had gone through. But he survived. He went through it because God knew it. Hallelujah. I think on Thursday, I messed you up a little bit. Job at a point, I think in chapter 20, but don't put it there. Uh, in chapter 23, really began to speak. Uh, yeah, but God, you see, uh, if, I, if I get him, I will ask him some questions. Hey. Job was a good man. Job was calm. But when the friends began to say all kinds of things to him, he got to an extent and then he said, in fact, if I meet him, I have some questions. In verse 42, God said, Milie, ask me. He said, Ah, huh? me? I, I put my hand here. I close my mouth. Me, ask you. Me, I'm a kind of 
I was the one who said it, but I'm lying. No, 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 no. You see, Isaiah thought he was a guy. In Isaiah chapter 6, when he saw him, the Bible says that when he saw him in the temple, I'm a sinner, oh, I'm a sinner. Hey, me, my mom. They, the Lord had to send for a, 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 what, a bird to bring coals, live coals, and put it on his mouth. Just really sanctify his mouth. One no pass him. Mr. Wami a day. What can someone win to ask in the wind? May God bring cold. Not ordinary one, no, the one in the fire. May he pick and put on to sanctify your mouth. Hallelujah. Because some of us, we need the refiner's fire to come and refine us. Some of us, that's what we need. I'm telling you. You don't have knowledge. You talk. You talk. Hallelujah. Do we actually need this knowledge? Yes, of course. We need it. Because if we don't have it, we will be struggling in church. This one I was telling some people I, I met over there. I said that, you see, if you use your strength to serve God, you fail. Romans chapter 10, 1 to 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be sick. And you see, listen carefully. Your zeal will not save you. It's your knowledge of him and what you have to do that will bring you salvation. Hallelujah. Because your zeal will try to let you use your strength. But if you have knowledge of him, you will know that you just have to accept. Through faith. The grace that is made available to you. But if you don't have that knowledge, you will struggle. You will use your strength. So he said, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. That's all that I'm praying for. That's all that, all that I'm seeking for these Israelites. But you go to them and say, for I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. And because it's not based on knowledge, they don't have the salvation they need. So he says that that's why I'm praying for them. He says, since they did not know the righteousness of God, they and sought to establish their own. You know, when you don't know what God is doing, you try to do things by your strength. And it doesn't take you anywhere. And it's in one bomb prayer. Hallelujah. Your prayer is not based on knowledge. You just pray. I mean, some people they are killing the devil. I said, hey, you killing devil. Even Jesus has not killed him. Even Jesus, look, they sometimes eh, when Jesus encountered them, not even devil himself or demons. They have the audacity to tell Jesus that, are you coming to destroy us before our time? If you, all that they're trying to tell Jesus is that if you are Christ, you know that this is not possible. Hallelujah! It's not possible. Because the Bible says that there is a lake of fire. In Hebrews, it says a lake of fire has been reserved for the enemies of God. So try and kill him. Your shoe will finish. Hallelujah. You, 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 with your shoe. Mitianos, mikuno, mikuno. Who bet you a tianos? What would you mikuno? Hallelujah. Who bet you a fianua bressa? When you are she. When you. He wouldn't die. Hallelujah. See, I don't bet you a tianos. Because Bible says that you put that under our feet. So you can step on him. Hallelujah. But you can't kill him. It's not his time yet. Learn. Study. Have knowledge. You won't kill the devil. <laughs> Somebody at his gate, he said, kill the devil. I said, hey! Tell your landlord. He's making a mistake. <laughs> Hallelujah. Since they did not know the righteousness of God 
and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. And if you don't submit to God's righteousness, no salvation. So that's why he said, I'm praying for them. So that they get, 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 you know, more, I, I, and there are people like that. There are other, other, other uh, how do you say, other religious organizations like that. They're using their strength. You can pray how many times you want in a day. That's your problem. Hallelujah. It doesn't. Amen. What you need is to know him. Hallelujah. Know Christ. If you know Christ, things will change. Things will be different. Hallelujah. Because you won't do things anyhow. If you want to do something, you take the Bible, search through it. I tell people that, you see, you say, how can I hear the voice of God? He's speaking to you, but you can't hear because he speaks the language of the Bible. And you don't know the language of the Bible. So when he's speaking, you think he's talking about Latin. He's not speaking Latin. He's speaking the language of God. Hallelujah. So, you see, and I can't hear God. When the Holy Spirit came, he's using, and you see, he built on what you have. If you, you know, it's easy to hear him when you are filled with his word. Because when he speaks, he speaks the Bible. And you can pick it easily. You go, why? Because he's inside of you. Hallelujah. Yeah, but how does he live inside of me? Ah. Where does the Holy Spirit live? Huh? In you. He lives in you. And the Holy Spirit is God. And God is Jesus. And Bible says that in the beginning, and the word, and the word, hmm, the word was God. Where's your Bible? I'm holding God. I'm holding God. Now, you can hold the Bible and you'll be holding a book. Somebody will hold the Bible and will be holding a book. The letter kills. The spirit. Because if you look at it just like these are letters. They won't do anything for you. So stop putting it under your pillow. Just before, let me go here. Hallelujah. I said do what? Hallelujah. Don't make that mistake. The letter. The spirit. That's what you say in, 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 in first grade. I mean, I don't, I don't have to go there because that's not what I'm doing. But the Bible makes us understand that it is only the spirit of God that will explain this to you. Is it the spirit of a man, the spirit that is in you? I can say something to you. You try to explain, I'll tell you that's not true. You are not in my head. It's the spirit inside of me that spoke that will make you understand. If I tell you this is the meaning of what I said, you can't challenge me because you are not in my head. Amen. That is why they go and bring machine. They say that he's telling lies. Let the machine check. And the machine makes mistakes. The machine is not in that person. Hallelujah. It's guesswork they do. They do machine learning. They do it. They say, if it goes like this, it means it's lying. And they put people in prison. Now they bring, brought them out. Because now they see the evidence and they say, oh, the machine lied. Hallelujah. The machine is a liar. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's the spirit that is inside of you. Hallelujah. So you need the spirit of God to bring your revelation. Hallelujah. Yeah, I think I have a little. Yeah, so we, we have, we, it's important that we have knowledge because zeal alone won't help us. You can use your strength. Some people, and I was, I was sharing this one. I said, there are people who are here. I call them. But by the grace of God, I'll call and say that, look, 
We are grateful to you for what you are doing. But I'm telling you, your strength won't help you. Because I see that everything you are doing, you are doing a lot in this house, but you're using your spoon. You get tired. You get tired. And when you get tired, the little thing that somebody will say will offend you. So, seek him. Study your, the word. Pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you. I'm telling you, yes, you, you can be in this house, and I want you to really work, save, do stuff, but don't do it with your strength. Because I will tell you, you, you know, my, my responsibility is not just to have thousand people sitting here. Yes, I want thousand people because I want more people to go to heaven. Amen. So I need uh, 1,000 people, 2,000, 10,000, 100,000. Yes, because I want to tell them the truth. Amen. But the truth is that if you, the fact that you are sitting here with your strength doing all kinds of things doesn't mean anything to you. Amen. So I will tell you, if you get offended, it, it's not like I don't care about your soul. I care about you. That's what I'm telling you. Why? Because if I don't tell you, you will be doing it. Ah, then last thing God will say, I never knew you. And I don't want that to happen. I want you to have understanding of what you are doing. I want to, you see, <laughs> Paul is an interesting figure. He will say one thing, and the next time he's saying something, and people who don't understand think that is controversial. He is not. He did it to Peter. And in 2 Peter chapter 3, Peter himself said that the guy says things people don't understand. And they try to mess it up, twist it, do all kinds of things, but it's just because they don't understand. Because he was full of knowledge. And I will show you certain things this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there a value? Can you put a value on knowing him as against riches and I mean wisdom and all kinds of things that people are seeking? Yes. I say what? Yes. Why am I saying yes? I'm saying yes because way back, God spoke through Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. God said something. Hallelujah. And let's see what God said. That this is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom, or the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. Hallelujah. But let the one who boasts, boast about this. About what? That they have the understanding to do what? To know him. Knowing him is much more valuable than your strength, than your wisdom, than your riches. Why? He says <laughs> that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in this, for in this, declares who? God doesn't delight in you. God doesn't delight in your wisdom. He doesn't delight. God's delight is in you. That's where God's delight is. He's delighted when he knows that you know him. You know him as the king of kings. Because you see, the problem with us is we don't know him. Because if you know God, you will worship him. If you know him and what he stands for, you'll walk in his will. The point is that we don't know him. If you know him, that one day he's coming. You see, if you know him, that what he has said, he will do. You will know that he has said that he will judge the world. So when you are living your life, you know that what he has said, he will do. And therefore, not that you walk around afraid, but you walk around 
having a father who cares for you so much that he's not eager to destroy you. He wants to restore you. That's what he wants. If he will send his son to die for us, he will do everything to make sure that he will. He will. He will. But we don't have that knowledge. So we now begin. You know, the, the point is that our focus, and again, we don't know him, we don't know his word. So our focus is here on earth. What we can get here, what we can achieve here, what we can do here. So many of us, it doesn't matter what, how, I mean, how we can achieve what we are seeking for. No matter what, we just want it. And we have forgotten that this world is not our home. You're just passing through. Look, yeah, but what are you talking about? You, you, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you, have to, you don't have to be ambitious. I'm not saying that you don't have to really desire. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that put first things first. If you put first things first, he's going to take care of what you do. He will go, you know, he will take care of it. He knows what you need. He knows it. And he's willing to provide it. He's willing to make you happy. It's not God's desire that you walk in sorrow so that he will come and comfort you. No. His desire is for you to walk in joy. That is why he says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what, you see, even in your worst moments, and Paul said it, he said, and I say it again, rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we as the children of God will have to put value on knowing him than putting value on the money that we can get, the cars we can buy. The, the, you know, the cars we buy kill us as well. Yeah, Let's look at Brother Paul. Who loves Brother Paul here? Hallelujah. He's one of my favorites in the Bible. And Jeremiah as well. Do you know why I like Jeremiah? Because I sometimes really behave like him. Jeremiah is saying everything that is wrong for the people. It's not what they want to hear. Like this morning. And then they will do all kinds of things. His own family hates him. They want, they, people, his friends abandon him. And he said, no, God, I mean, I will, I will speak again. I, I, I will not go. No, no, God, God I'm tired. Ah, okay. God didn't say anything. He's sitting down. I will go. I will go. I will go. Ah, but what's the problem? He said, if I say I won't go, then it becomes like fire in my bones. When there is fire in your bones, you can fire service can put it off. It's in your they have to kill you first. And if the only way that fire cannot really destroy you or deceive you is to go and preach the word, what will you do? Even if it is bad, even if the people don't like. You see, the people think that you are crazy. They don't know the fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. Something is going inside a man. And the man decides to, sometimes when you don't want to, sometimes you, you I mean, let me tell you. <laughs> yes, I'll say that. Don't worry, I'll say it. <laughs> there are some things I will say. I mean, if you, you just bring me everything, I will say. But this one I can say. Amen. Listen, there are times, eh? When things are going on, and, and, and people are saying that, yeah, you are hard. Your preaching is hard and everything. Then I say, okay, God, just really allow me to preach a nice one. One day I prepared some nice one for you. It was nice. It was so good. And I, I knew that I have finished. I prepared. Because the people like that one. So I prepared it. It was so good. I was taking my shower. God said, don't preach that one. Hey, 
But between now and when I'm going to really preach, what will I preach? Is I'll give you a word. And I came. What he gave me, everybody was angry. Hallelujah. I told God, I said, hey. God says I shouldn't preach what I have prepared. He said, but it's over there. He said, he said, he gives me a word to preach. But, you know, I love him because when he promised, he doesn't fail. So, yeah. So I came to church. I didn't know I was going to preach. <laughs> and as I was sitting in the office, he gave to me. So I did that. Time, oh, I didn't make notes. I did points. And then I came. Bakutawa. Bakuta. The people was that day. No amen. Nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I like him. I like him. But I like Paul as well. Amen. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. I'm just trying to really let you know that how valuable is the word and what kind of value you have to place on the word. Paul should be your example of how he valued the word. Amen. Okay. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 1. My main points will be in 7 to 10, but I just want you to really. Further, my brother, and remember. That in Jeremiah, he said, if you boast, don't boast about your strength, don't boast about what you, I mean, your riches, don't boast about your wisdom. Amen. Now, Paul comes here and then he says that further, and he's very knowledgeable because he studied the word, because he was one of the uh, first, I mean, he, he, I would say one of the first, because he was just being trained to become uh, um, whatever in, in the language. Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. And it is a safeguard for you. So sometimes I'll come and preach the same thing I preached last week. But you don't have to worry because it will bless you. Amen. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh. <laughs> for it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh. Don't put your confidence in the arm of flesh. Hallelujah. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence because I have really achieved a lot. And listen to what, now listen to what he was going to say. Um, if someone else thinks that they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Hallelujah. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. Hallelujah. Those were the people who thought that if you come from Nazareth, you are nobody. So he said, can anything good come from Nazareth? Hallelujah. Because they thought that, oh, I mean, forget about them. We are the people. That one I will say. In regard, <laughs> in regard to, uh, to the law, a Pharisee. He's a Pharisee. He knows that, you know, they, they really study. He studied. As for zeal, persecuting the church. That was his zeal. His zeal was these people, they want to turn things around. They didn't have knowledge. They had zeal. And therefore, they were they didn't have the knowledge to understand that Jesus is the Messiah. So they were using their strength patapa, to advance God's work. But it is not patapa. Hallelujah. I said it's not what. Patapa doesn't advance God's word. <laughs> so as for zeal, persecuting the church. As for righteousness based on the law, faultless. It's like the young, the rich young ruler. He went to Jesus. And Jesus said, okay, okay. He went to Jesus to ask questions. Because he was so sure. Yeah, but Jesus, you know, uh, what must I, oh yeah, obey the, uh, oh, this one, it's not to be, you, when, when were you born? When I was, I studied it from, when I was a child, I have really practiced everything. So, oh, sir, okay, fine. Go and sell everything. Go and sell everything and come and follow me. If you want to go to heaven, sell everything because the baggage is too much. You, you have Mercedes. You have uh, 
uh, BMW, you have Ferrari, you have Rolls Royce, you have you have Porsche, you have what? 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 Maybach. Okay, you have Maybach. Yes, you have what? Bugatti. Uh -huh. You have what? I feel the moment I'm going to cast. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have all that. Go sell everything because it's baggage. It doesn't take anybody to heaven. People will, will not watch this. If you post it, they will, if you are not careful, leave a comment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, he said, yeah, you have all that, but go sell and come and follow me because all that will take you anywhere. Huh? What are you talking about? Even my pastor told me that he, that is called great. Me, I have broken it to you, Jesus. You said what? Bible says that he turned and walked away. Ah, because he had great wealth. Listen, great wealth doesn't take it. Hallelujah. Yeah, but last week you were saying that we have to pay first fruits. Even this week I'll say it again. It doesn't mean that you don't have to pay first fruits. Because it's for your own good. Bible say, honor me with your first fruits. And what will happen? And I will fill your barns. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Your, your treasure is in your Bugatti. His treasure was in his wealth. So he couldn't really, his treasure was not with Jesus. His treasure was in his cars and everything. So he couldn't leave it. That was where his heart was. His, oh, sorry, his heart was in his treasure. And you know, he, he had all these cars. So that's, his heart was not with Jesus. As for Jesus, it was lip service was paying. He came to Jesus making him known. But he knew where he, So Jesus, you know, listen. I tell people all the time. You think you are serving armor. Let Jesus touch the place that will hurt you most. That is when you say, yeah, but, but, easy, uh, but, but then you become a stammerer. Hallelujah. You, you become... No, the, the point is that, listen, listen, Jesus heals stammerers. Let him heal you. Let him heal you. Listen. Yeah, he will heal you. Let, no, but, you, you see, but let him heal you, please. Let him heal you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking a swipe at uh, stammerers. I pray that every stammerer will really, uh, we prayed for somebody. Like, we had a child here. Who was a stammerer? I held his tongue every day to pray for him until he spoke well. Yes, it happened in this house. The testimony is there. The doctor said that he needs a speech therapy. They said he needs this. They said he needs that. He said he needs that. He went to the hospitals, no cure, nothing. Everybody tried. And the guy got angry. He wouldn't even speak again. You know, children, because he wasn't a stammerer. And, because, and when he started stammering, he, was not, he didn't want to talk because he starts, he wants to say one thing, he's taking so long. So he got angry, he wouldn't even speak to anybody. I told the parents, I said, let's pray. Let's pray. I will hold this tongue. But I use sanitizer though. I'll clean my hands well. Hold this tongue. Pray. Losing that tongue. And by the grace of God, he, today, he doesn't stammer. He speaks well. Hallelujah. So what I'm trying to say is that God heals stammerers. So if you are stammerer, don't get angry at me. But tell the people who are not stammerers, who want to be one. Tell them that it's not nice. Hallelujah. If they are truthful to God, they wouldn't be. Amen. No, anyway. But anyway. <laughs> so, I want you to understand. But don't put by Go to the next verse, verse 7. That's where we are. Going. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider what? For the sake of Christ. Hallelujah. Go on. What is more, I consider everything a loss 
because of knowing him, knowledge of him, because of that, I count everything lost. Because you see, when you put it on a scale, they can't match. The value on knowing Christ far exceeds anything on earth. He created all things. So how can the, the things that he created have much more value than him? It's impossible. It's just because the devil has twisted our minds and we sit in church and the love, you see, let me. Manupasem, listen to me carefully. This is important because this is going to mess up, mess you up big time. It's going to mess you up big time. Listen. This is the, the, the danger for Christians today. Work and what we can get out of it. Hallelujah. It's done to Christ for us. Yeah, but we don't basically. So ask, ask yourself first. When it comes to these things, think about yourself first. I have to make sure that my thinking about that is right. And you have to make sure that your thoughts about that is right as well. Why am I saying that? We've, we have put, listen, listen carefully. Give me your Bible again. No, there's one here. Let me see. This one. Sitting down, studying, takes you to heaven. Amen. Give me a notebook. These, these are your notebooks that you take to lectures. Or maybe you're a doctor, so this is what you take to the, uh, the consulting room. Or maybe online, whatever you use. What is much more valuable? Hmm? Will this give you money? In your mind? No. Will this give you money? At the end of the month, this one. So instead of studying this one, you are studying this. That is why we can sit down. Is there a lawyer here? Okay, then I can say, if you're a lawyer, you look online, don't get angry. <clears throat> to defend a thief, they will take to defend a thief. This Bible is too small. Go and bring me that one. Somebody go and bring me that one. It's the same thing. No, this one is bigger. Yeah. So you hold that one. So, and then bring your Bible. Okay. So, no, you hold it. So, uh, these ones, one, two, three, they, they are not Bibles now. Don't look at them as Bibles. They are the law books. Amen. And this one is the Bible. That one. Which one is bigger? For one case. For one case, so the lawyers will sit down and study this one. In 1955, uh, uh, John Sanders versus Joseph Bafo. Then they will study and they will study all the arguments. And one judgment. Has how many pages? When they, I don't, when they, just ask yourself the pink sheet time. When they are going, they go with suitcases. So some lawyers, they have suitcases, they have people who carry their suitcase to the court. And they open this one and quote 
and open this one, and, and they have time to uh, learn all that to defend the thief. Yeah, because the man who stole government money. Hallelujah. But they will study all this to defend them. Now, read only this one to save your own soul. You say no. Only this one. Then you take this. You see, this one, it won't, this one won't fit. Like suitcase, this one. Maybe this one's handbag. But they go with suitcases of books. Low books. Defense. Something that the person who did, he has died long ago. They will read it in court. Versus, uh, I don't know whether it's a football match. In the past, I thought versus was only for football matches until I began to read all these things. Then they would say all kinds of things and then they would defend. And it will take anybody to heaven. This thing. Spend only a few hours a day. You spend one hour a day. Tell me, how many of us spend one hour a day on this? But this is what is going to take you to heaven. All these ones, they'll give you temporal pleasure. So after Paul, you can sit down. <laughs> after Paul, had studied all these books and he has become so big that the, he can go to the Sanhedrin and take a letter. I'm going to Damascus. I'm going here. I'm going to kill them. I'm going to bring them. I'm going to do this. He had power. But when he encountered me, he said, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage. Listen to me. Bola. I consider them what? Garbage. That I may gain Christ. Hallelujah. And be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own. That comes from the law. But that which is through faith. Hallelujah. In Christ. The righteousness that comes from God. On the basis of my faith. Not because of my works. Not because of the law. Hallelujah. But that doesn't mean that when the, the, that faith brings you salvation, you go and sleep. To begin to do the works that were prepared for you before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. That is what it means. Hallelujah. Then after all this, after knowing what he knows and saying that because of what I know, I consider everything garbage. Now he says that I know Christ. Wait, wait, wait. And I said, what did you know at first? Hallelujah. This is what I call progressive knowledge. He wanted to know more. The knowledge that he has acquired was not enough for him. Because there is so much in Christ. You know, listen to me carefully. It doesn't matter how many times you read the Bible back to back and you know everything and you follow everything and you believe everything. You still don't know him. Why? Because not everything he did is written. So you can know everything about him in the Bible, yet you don't know everything about him because there are some that are not written. So you can know. So the desire to know more Hallelujah. Must be something that burns inside of you every day. You have to be passionate to know more about him. Hallelujah. So he says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings. Wait, 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 wait. When Paul was bragging, when he said, allow me to brag a little bit, he said he has been shipwrecked how many times? He said he's been beaten how many times? He said, is that not suffering? Now, now he's saying that I want to know him and to know and to be a particip uh, to, to, to participate in his suffering. And I'm asking myself, Paul, what you suffer, is that not enough? So let me ask you a question, a very simple one. What have you suffered that you are complaining? 
What have you suffered? Bible says that in that of apostles. He said when they were beaten and released, they went on the streets and they did proper demonstration. Dancing. Their demonstration was not against anything. No. It was a celebration of their beatings because they've been counted worthy to suffer for Christ. But you, you think suffering for Christ is wrong. Count yourself worthy to suffer for him. Count yourself worthy to suffer for him. Or Peter will say that if you suffer for being a thief and you are beaten, that's not worth it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11. And then, I think I have to close somehow. And then next week I can continue. Don't you think so? Yeah, okay. And so, somehow, attaining to the resurrection of the dead. You see, I was just thinking, what is he talking about? He's talking about rapture. Wake up. The dead in Christ rise again. So he wants to know him. He wants to know him and to know the power of his resurrection, to share in the fellowship of his, of his suffering and to be like him in his death. And so somehow he will attain to the resurrection of the dead. He's not saying that, oh, then I will die today and then I will rise tomorrow. No, he was talking about the end, when he will resurrect. And Bible says that we will meet him in the sky. The dead in Christ will rise. Paul says, if it is for only this life, only this, only here, then we are, of all people, beloved in the Lord, stop thinking about what to wear. Stop thinking too much about what to eat and where to sleep. I'm begging you. Jesus says that you are more valuable than the birds of the air. Yet, they don't do anything but they eat. Jesus knows that you have to eat and he will give you food. He knows how he's going to feed you. He knows it. Seek the food. Let us seek the food. Love it. My prayer for you is to be strong. Lord, how do you know you? How do you know you? Next week, I'll teach you about ineffective knowledge. Ineffective and unproductive knowledge. Ineffective and unproductive knowledge. Because many people, they seek it, they read it. But there are certain things that, you know, only when you go to the, uh, to the market and buy fish and come and put it on fire, that's not sweet. It, it's nice fish, but it's not sweet. If you want soup, you don't go to the market and buy fish and then come and put it on fire. When your husband comes, he will slap you. Who taught you that? When your mother was cooking, you didn't go to the kitchen, eh? That's not soup. If you want to know about ineffective knowledge, come next week. Moses, where well, would be the Bible now? Who call them? Yeah. Next week, I'll teach you. Amen. Do you still love me? Okay, all right. If you love me.